Welcome back to another YouTube. We are diving back into the series on coronary angiography and views. And up next is REO cranial. Now this is a view that doesn't get a lot of hype, doesn't get talked about too much. It's really for the mid to distal LAD, which you will see. And there are some scenarios where you are going to want to open up that space a little bit where it has overlap in other views. So yes, this is going to be part of your four corner in geography, but this might not be your working view for any type of intervention unless you are intervening on that mid LAD. But if you are, then it is great and it is definitely needed. So just to recap on some of the other videos that we have done, how do you know that this is REO? And there are two ways, right? The first way some of you know is the spine. The spine is on your left-hand side of the image. That is REO versus if it was on the right-hand side of the image, it would be LAO. The other way that we learned is by the outline of the heart shadow, which we can draw right here. That definitely looks definitely looks like RAO that we use for our LV grams, not this oblong LAO shape. So this does make it RAO. Now, how do we know it is cranial? Well, although I did just tell you this is really for the mid to distal LAD, we do see the LAD best in this view. It is the least overlapped. And as we know, cranial views, A, are for the LAD and caudal views, again, just to recap, are for the circumflex because the circumflex has a U in it just to help you remember. Now, in certain images, you are going to think that the circ looks fine in this view, but when we play some of the images that are um, actual acquisitions, you will actually see the circ kind of curves up on itself, which is why it's not a great view for the circumflex and the septals kind of get overlapped on top of the OMs here as well. Not to say you don't look at the circ at all. You definitely do. It can kind of help you find the ostium of some of those OMs that are a little more distal, but this proximal set segment of the circumflex really is not showcased really well in this view. Instead, this mid and distal segment of the LAD is, this is the first diagonal. Sometimes you can see the ostium really well, but sometimes the LAD will kind of do this overlap in front of the ostium and the ostium diagonal is actually behind this image. So make sure you check it in the LAO cranial view as well, which we will go over. But for the mid to distal segment, fantastic. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do in this image is just outline the anatomy. I like to do this in every kind of view that we talk about just so you can practice identifying your anatomy. So we said again, this was really for the LAD. If you're trying to decide LAD versus circumflex, remember this is an RAO view, right? So what wall is over here? Anterior, this is apical, this is inferior and in the middle were our lateral and septal walls, right? So what feeds the anterior wall? The LAD, so this should be LAD territory. What feeds the lateral wall? The circumflex, so this should be the circumflex territory. Remember, we always start, um, this is the left main for some reason. Poor left main gets neglected in my videos. Then we have, remember, the main trunks of the tree first, right? So we decided this is circ territory. We decided this is LED territory, which makes these branches on either side of the LED either septals or diagonals, right? So how do you know which from which? Well... Remember, there are more septals and they are smaller, although in RAO, right, the septal and lateral wall are right here, which is the direction that these branches, these septal perforators are going, if that helps you label them. Yep, all of these are septal perforators, which means that this must be a diagonal or D1 because there is only one diag here. This is the circ, and remember this proximal segment is kind of curly cued and overlapped up here, so we can't separate that out really well. And at least in this view, this is OM1, OM2. This is either a PL or OM3. And then you see this is very different, right? This one is the PDA because it does have septal perforators. And this is the distal circ segment that is going into the AV groove. Example number one. So this image looks a lot like the one that we just identified, but we're going to go ahead and march it out anyway, because it's a good example. 
So this up here is the catheter that is engaging, right? And it is engaged into the left main. Then we said this is in RAO. You look at the heart shadow. Up here is the anterior wall. Yeah, I do not think that helped. Neither did orange. Okay, anterior wall. This is the apex, which the LAD does go down and wrap around the apex. So we're starting to think this is the LAD. Then this is the inferior wall. And up here is the lateral septal wall kind of overlapped on each other. So let's use that to identify our main vessels. Okay, so we said this is probably the LAD because this is wrapping around the apex. Then you see there are smaller segments here, right? Can you see all of these branching off? And then compare that to this one kind of larger vessel up here. So which one do you think is the diagonal and which one do you think are the septals? Okay, these smaller ones, and there's more of them, we will call these septal perforators. And up here, this is the diagonal. And you see what I mean that you can't really see the ostium because it is a little overlapped on each other, which is why this view is not great for the proximal LED, but it is good for the mid to distal LED. And this is why. Now this over here, like I said, this looks like the circ is kind of outlaid well, but do you see this dark circle right here? That is because that circ is up and on itself and overlapped, so you're seeing contrast twice. So it does appear darker. So the prox circ is actually here. And then what you're actually seeing is the kind of mid distal circ. So we'll call that the circ. Now, this is where it gets a little confusing. So these definitely look like septals. So I'm more inclined to call that the PDA. And this just a really large OM. These are smaller OMs, but they are, you know, notable to label. So we'll do OM 1, 2, and 3. Now you do remember this view isn't really for the circ, so you do want to be open to changing some of these labels as you take some of your caudal views and as you evaluate the RCA to really figure out, is this a PDA? Is it not? You know, we think it is, but let's also take a look at the, the right coronary. Our next example. So our angulation here is a little different than our angulation on the previous image. And now keep in mind when you're learning these four corner views, you have what we call steep views and shallow views. Okay, so an REO of 21, a cranial of 37. This is more of a shallower REO you might see in the teens, right? 15, 16, 17 degrees. Cranial 37. I've seen all the way up to 45, that's a steeper cranial, and you're gonna to start to see the heart rotation be a little different. So it's not always gonna be picture perfect, depending on what your physician chooses as their angles. So lots of overlap going on here, right? If you can kind of see that in this, this proximal area, but although it tells you this is REO cranial, catheters here, and here's what I meant, you really can't see the spine in this image. So you are relying on the heart shadow instead to tell you that this is probably an RAO view. And then we're saying it's cranial because, again, this is the circ kind of overlapped on itself. It's also overlapped on top of the catheter and on top of the LAD. But this mid to distal segment of the LAD, you can see the clearest out of the rest of the vessels. So it's probably a cranial view. And then we will get into labeling. So we already said that this is the LAD, right? This is the LAD reaching around the apex. Now, septals versus diagonals. So do you see all these fine, smaller branches right here? Are you able to kind of see those? So those are all the septal perforators. And then up here, again, it's, it's very hard to tell because some of the OMs are overlapped. But do you see a branch here and then a question will kind of branch up here? So there's possibly two diagonals here. This one is definitely a diag. OK, 
Okay, and then we're just kind of questioning like, is this up here a diagonal or is that actually part of the cirque? And just because the cirque is so tortuous up here and it's flipped on itself, is it making it look like this OM is in diagonal territory? And that's again, why, why we use other views. I know I keep saying that, but it's, it's very important. So then this one is either an OM or a PDA, okay, depending again on, on the rest of the views. And then again, this was either OM or a diagonal. This segment down here definitely goes into diagonal territory, which tells me it's probably more likely a diagonal. This might be an OM because you see like this branch is on this right side of the LED. And then this branch is on this left side of the LED. So this is probably diagonal territory and this is probably more likely an OM. That's just kind of how you reason those things out. And then if, if I'll just point it out, um, this right here, the shadowing is actually an EKG lead. And our last example, so this is some imaging in the middle of an intervention. So they did choose this as their working view because they're working on this mid segment right here, the LED, although there is quite a bit of overlap. We don't know what the the other images look like. Maybe this kind of served that physician the best for what they were trying to accomplish. So again, you can't see the catheter here, but you can kind of see the spine on this, this left-hand side. You can see some of the vertebrae there. So that is, I mean, it does say it down here. You can cheat, right? <laughs> but this is an REO view. Um, and again, a, a lot of overlap of this circ and the LED segment is filled out a little better. So this is a cranial view. Now this circumflex actually has a, a longer proximal segment and you don't start to see the overlap really until right here. And then that PDA slash OM starts to go over the LAD. Um, you definitely have some overlap of the, the proximal LAD segment, but let's kind of march this out. Um, so the left main is here. Up here, because this is the anterior wall, right? should be the LAD and then this mid distal segment of the LAD that's the the lesion of interest right here and then the distal segment that wraps around the apex okay now remember septal is this way diagonals this way in this view because this is more of the the free wall of the left ventricle near the anterior wall and then here is septal lateral territory and these are very small little hairs, okay, which more takes the resemblance of septal perforators. This is a larger branch, which more takes the resemblance of the diagonal. Again, you really can't see the origin very well. There's some overlap um, from, the from the circumflex system. So it's hard to tell, like, is this right here one diagonal? Is this a second diagonal? We're not 100%, so we'll check our cranial view. But let's try to do the circ. So again, this cranial is mainly to showcase the LAD, but we'll give it a shot. So this is definitely the ostium of the circ or where the beginning of that takeoff is. This is really, again, kind of questionable. So that's probably the circ and these are probably the OMs and or PDA. Okay, this is an OM or a PDA. And I say that because you do kind of see what you think are septals, but the septals from the LED are also in this area. So it's hard to tell, is it originating off of this branch itself, or are they just septals that are coming over from the LED and makes it look like they're coming off of this branch? So we'll say that's an OM or a PDA, depending and needs to be confirmed in other images. Okay, so I hope that was helpful, a nice overview of REO cranial, what it's for, what you're kind of looking at in that area, and make sure you check your other views. That is what they're for. And next, we are going to move into LAO cranial and LAO caudal. Thank you so much for tuning into this video. Like and make sure you subscribe to this channel if you want to see more videos like this in the future.